Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to explain to you uh, what the idea behind the semantic web is. So what is the semantic web? What is RDF or resource description uh, framework or format? What is linked data? What is this all about? Uh, what I'm going to use is this book you see in front of you now, the Learning Sparkle book. You can find it at learningsparkle.com. It's a very nice book. Um, I, I'm going to uh, be uh, uh, taking some material from chapter 2 specifically to explain this. Now for Sparkle itself, I do actually have another tutorial series that you can watch. You just go back to uh, my my uh, YouTube channel and you'll find uh, my Sparkle tutorial. Now, before I actually try and explain the concept behind the uh, semantic web, let me give you an example, and again it's actually from, from the book. Imagine you wanted one day to visit uh, uh, um, um, an airline comparison website where you want to, for example, book some tickets to fly somewhere and then you go to the website, enter your you know, source and destination, where you're traveling from, where you're going to and the dates and stuff, and then the website starts to list, to list some, you know, uh, uh, some you know, air, uh, uh, um, airway, airways companies and ticket prices and all that, so something like Skyscanner, for example. I'm not promoting Skyscanner, I just, you know, googled it around and found it, found it. Now, what these websites do in the background is, they actually have their own code or their own programs or tools that visit other airlines' websites, visit airlines' website and scan those websites and find meaning, find useful information so they can actually retrieve that information and display it to you. This is where, this is known as... Um, web scraping or screen scraping so again what they do is they just analyze the html structure of those uh, of of all of those websites for of airlines websites and then retrieve information from there what so remember this what they do is they actually analyze the web structure or the website structure of the, of those airlines now what happens is what if actually those airlines change the structure of their website or the look of their website what these people need to do again is go back to those websites and analyze them again, analyze the structure again, so they can actually retrieve the data and give you the comparison. What should happen here is if those airline websites, if they can have the ability to share their data in another format, you know, apart from you know the display or and the, the HTML, if they can share the data they have, like you know, the ticket prices, the uh, uh, departing and landing times, and their list of destinations and stuff like that, if they can share it in a nice, understandable format, understandable by computers, of course. Then that would make the life of websites like this and the developers of websites like this much, much easier. And this is where the idea of the semantic web uh, is coming from. If you look at this uh, text here, which is actually taken from the book again, so the author of the book uh, defines the semantic web as a set of standards and best practices for sharing data and the semantics of that data over the web for use by applications. Remember this, it is for use by applications. It's not for human beings to use and understand. It's for applications, i.e. for computers uh, and for programs to make use of. Of course, the, the end results are usually for computers, but the use is by applications. So what does that mean? Let's break it down into smaller statements. When we say a set of standards, why do we use standards? Well, the idea behind standards is that instead of everyone doing their own thing and their own design, if we have a universal standard that everyone can follow, then our applications, our programs, or our tools can communicate easily. So having standards or protocols in general, that's very useful to sort of have a universal format that everyone can understand. Otherwise, everyone will be having their own format and their own standards. So these standards for the, for the semantic web are the RDF data model, a resource description framework, or format, I've forgotten what the F stands for, but RDF is a data model, it's not a language, and I will explain what that means in my, in my coming videos. And then the Sparkle query language, again, I have my own tutorial on Sparkle, you can go back to my, uh, uh, my playlist and watch that tutorial if you want to learn. And then we have the RDF schema and the OWL 
standards for storing vocabularies and ontologies. I'll explain what ontologies are and why we have these vocabularies in my coming videos. And then, that, so that's the idea behind the standards, and these are the standards for the semantic web. Again, for data to be shared and to be uh, 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 and for use by applications. Now, the best practices, for example, you know, for sharing data over the web, you know, for use by applications. So, uh, you know, the best, practice, best best practices for the semantic web. And by the way, it's all uh, invented by Tim Berner Lee. The sem the best practices, for example, are to use URIs, uniform resource identifiers, to name things, so we can have thing, uh, naming of things coming from certain places or certain URIs, and then to use the standards such as you know the RDF framework to or format to uh, uh, model data, the data model, and then the Sparkle language to query the data. Now, what these uh, practices provide, they actually provide excellent guidelines for you know creation and infrastructure of, for, for the creation of an infrastructure of for, for the semantic web now the semantics of data when we mentioned that it is uh, about the semantics of data so th semantics usually uh, is about meanings yes uh, imagine you see something like this you see this sh that number and then the hash concept you know it's talking about the concept but you have no idea what 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 the concept what what it is and what's it about. But if you see this URI here, you see the whole the full URI here, then you can understand at least that it's coming from a certain place, from the Congress Library, for example, or something like that. So at least that gives you some hint or some context about what the concept is, where it's coming from, and what it is about. At least gives you some context. So that's the, what we mean by the meaning here. Of course asking computers to explain meanings and do meanings of things that's maybe too much at the moment but at least we can give them some, some, some sort of ideas or context about what data from where, where the data is from and what it actually links to so we can actually use that to have some meaningful results and of course we have the web ontology language or pronounced as owl it's actually W O L, but but written O W L just for ease of pronunciation, so pronounced owl as you know. That actually language or that design uh, uh, ontology language actually lets us sort of uh, store valuable bits of, of of meaning about data. So for example, if you want to design an ontology, we'll, as I said, I will come to that later. But if you want to design an ontology, and you can use uh, some uh, properties there, and you know, for example, if you use a property called, for example has spouse so if I want to uh, have a property between two individuals I know that the word spouse or has spouse is symmetrical ie if a is has spouse B that means B has spouse a yes or for example if I say if I uh, say for example if a has bought from B, if A has bought something from B, I know the word buy, for example, is the opposite of the word sell, so I can know, for example, that that necessarily means B has sold to A, so at least I can know the meaning now of things, or at least some, some semantics about things that, you know, the spouse is symmetrical, i.e. it goes in both directions, and sell uh, and buy are opposite of each other and these things actually in OWL when designing ontologies these things are very very useful to run some queries and to understand the uh, 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 the structure or the contents or the sort of relationships inside a certain domain as I said we'll come to that later in my coming videos we'll come, I'll come to uh, designing ontologies and you know RDF schemas and what all that actually mean uh, means and what it's what it is actually about. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.